This video is sponsored by World Anvil. I watch a lot of YouTube. In fact, it's probably my primary form of entertainment these days. Oh sure, I talk about all these movies I want to watch, or these TV shows I'm behind on, or podcasts I've been meaning to catch up with. But honestly, if I'm just looking to unwind, I'll usually just throw on a couple of YouTube videos. At the time of writing, there are more than 400 videos in my Watch Later playlist, but I'll talk about that some other time. Today I want to talk about the type of videos I watch. As you can probably guess, I watch a lot of D&D YouTubers. Actually, I guess somebody recently called us Dungeon Tubers? Sure, why not? It's as good a name as any. It's better than D&D Tubers. And a lot of games besides D&D also have dungeons, so Dungeon Tuber is more comprehensive. But yeah, I watch the videos made by a lot of my peers. Just to throw out a few examples, I watch Matt Colville, Ginny D, Lou Boffin, Matthew Perkins, Megaphone Man, uh, Legal Kimchi, Jordan, uh, Sly Flourish, JP Covert, Enter the Dungeon, No Nat Ones, and again, that's just a small sampling. Outside of my TTRPG interests, I also watch a bunch of video essay channels that focus on movies and media. Nerd Sync, Patrick H. Willems, Troy Boyo 17 uh, Pillar of Garbage, Jesse Gender, Movies with Mikey. Again, these are just some of them. This is by no means comprehensive. But sometimes when I'm dead tired and coming off a long day, I don't necessarily feel up to watching other dungeon tubers, and I'm not ready for a full video essay. On those days, I hang out with my other favorite corner of the internet, reaction channels. Where is the girl? <laughs> uh, there was like an 8% chance. Hey, go talk to your <laughs> 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 So sad. I love watching people react to movies or TV shows that I've already watched. I'm one of those assholes who will always want to put on a movie I've already seen if I know you haven't seen it, and I'll just watch your reaction to it. So the fact that there's a whole corner of the internet where I can get that same level of satisfaction without bothering my friends has probably saved more than a few of my friendships. But what if I told you that the reason I like watching reaction channels is probably the same reason I prefer dungeon mastering over being a player? That's what we're talking about today. This topic was voted on by my patrons and YouTube members who helped me decide what videos I should add to my schedule for February. If you want to help pick video topics I'll discuss on this channel, uh, consider joining my Patreon or becoming a YouTube member at the Fabricate tier. There's a poll up right now to vote for bonus videos for April, uh, but it's going to close really soon, so sign up fast if you want to catch this one. If you can't join right now, don't worry, there will be more polls in the future. You'll also get other cool rewards for being a member, like monthly D&D PDFs and exclusive live streams. So if any of that sounds cool, go check those out. So let's start by talking about why I love being a dungeon master. Now there are lots of reasons, more than just the ones that are relevant to today's topic. For example, I like being a performer and a bit of a ham, so it's fun to entertain my friends, and running games gives me a great outlet to do that. I'm also a control freak, so I like having an agenda for what we're going to do when my friends and I all hang out, and I'm happy to be the one to set that agenda if I have to be the one to do it, oh well. I'm also probably a narcissist, so running games appeals to that part of my brain that thinks I have all the best ideas. And I like sharing my interests with my friends, and when we're talking about something like D&D, usually if you're the one inviting people to play, it's assumed you're also going to be running the game. Not always, but again, if I have to be the one to run the game so we play, I'm happy to do that. But I also love curating experiences for people. That's why I especially love running games for new players. I love walking them through what I think of as the essential elements of something like D&D. And that's so much easier to do when I'm the one running the game. I can introduce my favorite monsters and pace them out properly and foreshadow them so they all have the appropriate gravitas. I can hand out magic items and other rewards that I think will help you have more fun playing your character. I can design my campaign to bring out the parts of your character that I think are cool and invite you to explore your character's story arcs. I do these things because I think it is fantastic fun to watch somebody get it. To go from being out of the loop to being a fan. It's one of the reasons the Vox Machina storyline is my favorite Critical Role campaign, because that's what Matt is doing. He's introducing his favorite parts of D&D's 40 year history to his friends who don't know anything about the game, and we get to see them become fluent in some of the tropes and lore in real time. I've talked before about the XKCD topic 10,000, about how silly it is to mock people for not knowing about something. The example in the comic is the Diet Coke and Mentos thing. The author points out that not only is it normal for people to not know all the things you think everybody already knows about, because nobody is born knowing anything, so at some point they will have to learn it, today is just the day that they're learning about it from you, but also, and even more importantly, quote, if I make fun of people, I train them not to tell me when they have those moments, and I miss out on the fun. Now last time I talked about this, I was doing so in the context of gatekeeping, so I focused on the first part of that quote. The idea that mocking people for being out of the loop trains them not to tell you when they don't know about something. And that just keeps them from trying out your favorite hobbies, 
like, for example, tabletop RPGs. But today I really want to highlight the second half of the quote, the idea of missing out on the fun. For me, it's fun bringing new people into my hobbies. Even if it means I'm doing something I've already done a few dozen times, like running a game of D&D, or foreshadowing for later in this video, watching a movie I've already seen, well, the experience is going to be brand new because I'm doing it with new people, and their reactions are going to make this a special moment because it's their first time doing something that I really enjoy, and hopefully they'll enjoy it as well. Of course, that's not a guarantee. I've run D&D games for people who I later determined were not the right fit for my style of table. Sometimes these were not new players, but some of them were. It does happen. Just like I've shown movies to friends who wound up hating them, even though it might be a movie I love dearly. It doesn't mean you're not still gonna be friends with those people anymore, it just means you don't agree on everything, and that's okay. But sometimes you get lucky and you find someone who likes your hobby just as much as you, likes your favorite movie just like you do. But the longer you do this, the more you come to realize that it's not just about inviting someone to try the thing you like, it's about meeting them halfway. It's about curating an experience that you think they might actually enjoy. This is an idea that I think is perfectly summed up by the movie High Fidelity. Now I think that's a great movie, but I'm going to spoil the ending because it's a very hard movie to recommend. Mostly because the character is unlikable for a lot of the film, plus there's a joke halfway through that basically ruins the movie. The main character finds out that something he did when he was young basically ruined someone's life and it's played for laughs and it's rough. Like the joke is that he's still being really selfish and focusing on himself, but man oh man, it is hard to root for that dude after that moment. And the whole movie does sort of seem to linger and revel in the gatekeeping culture that I've denounced before, as the record store employees snipe at each other and at their customers about what music people are and are not allowed to like. Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels? No! The Righteous Brothers. Well, never mind. No, not never mind. You tell me right now what's wrong with the Righteous Brothers. Nothing. I just prefer the other Bullshit! One. How can it be bullshit to state a preference? But that actually brings me to what I want to talk about. The end of the movie. See, partway through the film, we get this quote that really sums up the main character's ethos. A while back, Dick Barry and I agreed that what really matters is what you like, not what you are like. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. And I won't deny that, as a young and opinionated asshole, that idea appealed to me for a long time. Did I believe it completely? Well, probably not to the level of the record store assholes in the movie. But you know, I believed it a little. But I had misunderstood the movie. Not an uncommon experience for white men in their 20s, I will grant you that. But at the end of the film, the main character has learned the opposite lesson. He's learned that that ethos we heard from that clip is actually a toxic attitude to have. By focusing on that previous quote, I had actually missed the point of the film. Partially because I'm not sure it's completely earned. Like, I don't think they totally nailed the transition as he learns to be a better person, at least in the eyes of a more modern audience. But an attempt is made to challenge this mindset in the film. And that's ultimately the final takeaway the movie wants you to have. So, you know, spoilers for the end of the movie, but at the very end, we get these final lines. I've started to make a tape in my head for Laura. Full of stuff she'd like. Full of stuff that would make her happy. Look, I am certainly a man who is prone to hyperbole. I try to temper it, but I am not immune to thing good or thing bad narratives, especially in the privacy of my very public YouTube channel. But this last line really sums up my approach for when I run my games. I could run any game I wanted, and sometimes I do, and I put out the call for a game that I want to run and I see who wants to play. But other times, especially when I'm trying to introduce other people to my favorite hobby, my goal is to check my ego at the door. I am here to run the game that I think my players will enjoy. It really is that simple. Speaking of making things simple, your TTRPG game could be made a lot simpler if you use today's sponsor, World Anvil. World Anvil is a fantastic online toolkit that helps you keep track of the lore of your world. The last thing you want to do is overload your players with too much information that they won't be able to parse. That's one of these things that makes it really difficult for them to get on board with the game and can potentially alienate them from the experience. But with World Anvil, you can take that relevant lore and load it into a fantastic, presentable website so your players will actually enjoy reading the stuff you share with them. You can give them links for magic items or monsters or factions, and as they learn more, you can add more details. And you can also have notes that only you can see, which makes it so much easier to keep track of your GM notes. And World Anvil is offering a discount to the viewers of this channel. If you visit worldanvil.com slash supergeekmic and use the promo code supergeek at checkout, you'll save 51% off of any annual membership. Once again, that is worldanvil.com slash supergeekmic and use the promo code supergeek. Thank you so much to World Anvil for sponsoring this video.
So now that you understand why I love GMing, you probably have a decent idea why I love reaction channels. Though in fairness, that might still seem like a huge leap of logic, and that's okay. I get it. See, reaction channels appeal to that same part of my brain as GMing, where I get to share experiences with someone and get their perspective on my passions. If I had my druthers, my friends and I would get together all the time and just watch movies and TV shows, especially the stuff that I've already seen and I want to share with them. But ain't none of us got that kind of time. But thankfully there's an entire corner of YouTube where people do that every day. Additionally, a lot of the channels I watch tend to have really terrific insights into these movies. I like it when people come up with observations or ideas or theories that I wouldn't have thought of, no matter how many times I've seen the movie. And I also like it when the reactors don't hide the fact that, sometimes, they might not like something. They might phrase it politely so they don't get a bunch of hate in the comments from the berries of the world, but they also don't pretend they liked a movie or TV show just because that's what the audience expected. But honestly, at the end of a long day, I just enjoy the comfort of something familiar, something where I can experience predictable emotions. So a reaction to a movie I've already seen and love, that's a perfect way for me to relive that experience. But because someone else is watching it for the first time, it also gives me that vicarious feeling of being able to experience something as if it was new. And I don't mind if the reactor doesn't like something. Like, that's cool, that's life, it happens. But it's still a chance to share an experience and get someone's authentic reaction to something you know is coming. And that's the fun of DMing for me as well. I know what's coming next, even if it's only a few seconds before the players do. And the fun for me isn't making sure the players react exactly how I expect them to. It's just sitting back and seeing how they'll react and letting them experience the adventure in their own way. Look, we can never experience something for the first time twice. I won't be shocked by the twists and turns of a movie I've already seen many times before. Now, it's never stopped me from watching a movie again. My mother and I both love the movie Collateral, and even though it's 20 years old, Jesus Christ, and we've seen it a whole bunch of times, when we get together, we still love to put it on and watch it again, because it rules. But also, there's something so fun about watching somebody else react to the big moments from my favorite films. Because even if it's just for a moment, it feels like the first time. So in the spirit of sharing the things I love, I want to tell you about some of my favorite reaction channels in no particular order. Previewed is a terrific channel that focuses on TV episodes, especially the mainstream nerdy stuff. But what I love most about them is that even though their stated goal is just to do bits and riff and entertain the viewer more than most reactors do, or at least more than most reactors might admit to doing, Adam and Jay are also so willing to be emotionally vulnerable with their audience. <laughs> oh. Oh, buddy. You know I'm gonna be there, like I said, right? Um, I'm so happy to hear your voice. Oh, okay. Daddy's gotta go, okay? <laughs> oh. Hey! We were here for fun time, not, <laughs> not dead feels, oh. come on now! Oh. Oh. They've also got a few episodes of a pretty solid D&D actual play show, and they do so many D&D jokes during their Vox Machina reactions. <laughs> <laughs> you got it for me! Woo! Natalie Gold is a great channel. She's probably my favorite who has done the full viewing experience of the major nerdy franchises. The MCU, Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings, all on camera. But she also has great stuff still coming out today. I really recommend her channel. That looks like menswear. Pew research shows that two feminine women in a relationship sends a problematic message. Yeah, this isn't penthouse. We're not, we're, uh, 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 I'm so angry right now! Clear-cut gender role relationship. Ah! You mean something that's more palatable for f the patriarchy? Funny Little Gal Reacts has such an open and vulnerable heart. She loves characters truly and deeply. And I mean this as a compliment. It is wonderful watching her get emotionally devastated by good art, like Avatar The Last Airbender or Firefly. But it's also very hard to find a clip of a sad moment that doesn't spoil a TV show for you. So I'll also point out that she has a very infectious laugh. <laughs> oh, that is one chonky dragon. Oh my God. <laughs> Popcorn in Bed has done a ton of the typical stuff, MCU, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, but she also dives deep into a lot of classic movies, the stuff I grew up watching that I feel like barely anybody reacts to. We saw those kids. Yes, you did. And if you can find a way to cut $650 million from the federal budget, you can keep your lousy shelters. <gasps> lousy shelters? 
We try not to say hate in our house, but that guy is getting close. The normies are a great group of reactors. Sometimes they'll do a full couch or a big crowd for the crowd-pleasing movies or more straightforward shows like The Office. And other times they'll just have a few people, especially for shows that require a lot more consideration. Their Lost and Breaking Bad reactions are terrific, and they just started Succession with a pretty small group, and I am so excited for that. Tell me what's in the steam. After the fall of the Soviet... Jesus! Oh <laughs> Whoa. You don't start a sentence like that. Cinebinge is a great duo of really smart folks who also have some fantastic reactions. There are also a couple of goofballs that are just really endearing. I also believe they both play D&D and Simone is a Critical Role fan, so you'll see a number of Mighty Nine t-shirts across the course of their reactions. They've also got some of the best thumbnails in the game. I'm sorry, but it's just the truth. I represent the government hmm. of the United States without passion or prejudice. And my client has a case. Hmm. I really like this dynamic that the opposing lawyer is a friend. Mm-hmm who's just doing his job and is a good guy. Diegesis is a terrific pair of ladies. They don't just have great reactions, though they totally do, but they're also not afraid to stand by their opinions when they might not line up with the consensus around a show. And they'll sass back to the comments in a way that tells me, yeah, they actually do think about why they feel the way they do. They try to get inside their own heads and it makes for a great experience. Don't you dare, don't you actually dare do that. I swear <laughs> to God. Wow. Wow. Unredeemable. He's I know, unredeemable. He did it on purpose. That's so sad. And I feel like really sad for a guy. Are there any more tissues? You sick bastard. And the last one I want to highlight is TBR Schmidt. This is a husband and wife duo, and their channel is just cozy. I don't have a better word for it than that. They're just great chill vibes. Also, on the day I found out I was going to be a father, TBR Schmidt happened to upload their reaction to Three Men and a Baby. They watched it because they were expecting their own kids, so it was very funny and weirdly moving to watch people watch a movie about raising a baby as they're getting ready to raise a baby, as I'm discovering that I'll soon be getting ready to raise a baby. Well, we tried your mommy. Maybe I should try mine, huh? <laughs> Mom? That's definitely gonna be us. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want to do? <laughs> It'd be like our first day home from the hospital, like, uh... So, you like movies? <laughs> And of course, slight deviation from the format we're discussing, but it's no coincidence that I also get a huge kick out of watching Megaphone Man livestream his experience of watching the Vox Machina campaign for the first time, because not only do we get a ton of amazing insights, but also some great reactions. Natural one. Oh, of course. Oh my god. Of course. I'm gonna kill everyone in this motherfucking house. <laughs> So many ones today, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. You might have just been rolling, rolled all along because it was a cool moment and a one or two D6 would have been disappointing. Bad Wolf Bo. Bo I think that's the real answer. Like if we're if we're talking about like what is like why did Matt do that? That's the answer. It's a cool moment and you it, fuck it, those could be d4s and you just roll a shitload of them and that feels way cooler than rolling it, like rolling uh like 5d4 feels more cool than rolling 2d10. You know? So I think I think you hit the nail on the head on like why this is happening. It's just, I'm, I'm uh, taking the implication of what it means if we look at the rules, uh, but you're right. He's probably just not going by the rules, <laughs> just for a cooler thing. Subscribe to Megaphone Man if you haven't already. He's actually trying to make it full-time right now, um, and I think it would be amazing to get him to 1,000 subscribers because he's really close. And on the subject of movie and TV reactions, if you're someone who watches reaction channels and you've got some recommendations that I did not list off here today, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. This was a really fun video to make. I love both of these topics, and I loved bringing them together today. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. Support me on Patreon if you're willing and able. Anything makes a huge difference, and I really appreciate it. Join my Discord server, follow me on Twitch, and sign up for my newsletter. All those links are in the doobly-doo below. Uh, click here to check out my video about the world-building inherent in the Shadow Dark game. Uh, that was a really terrific one to make. Until next time, play fair, and have fun.